Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Healthcare. As you know by now, Vikings quarterback Teddy Bridgewater suffered a serious knee injury. Sports injuries are not limited to just pro athletes like Teddy. Students in sports are also at risk for all kinds of injuries. With the fall sports season in full swing, we take a close look at the most common sports injuries that pose a risk to our kids. And joining us is Urgency Room Dr. Susie Hofferman. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. So what are some of the most common type of sports injuries that you're seeing with kids of all ages, I guess, in the urgency room? One of the most common categories of sports injuries we see at the urgency room are called acute traumatic injuries. These are injuries that occur suddenly with a sudden blow, collision, or a fall. Common injury patterns that we see with this type of injury include broken bones or fractures, ankle sprains, st muscle strains, contusions, or bruises. The treatment for these injuries really depends upon what the specific injury is, but oftentimes splinting, ice, and rest are indicated. Another common injury pattern we see are overuse injuries. And these injuries tend to happen over time more gradually. Examples of overuse injuries include tendonitis and stress fractures. Tendonitis we see commonly in the elbow and in the ankle. And in sports like tennis or golf where an athlete is repeatedly swinging a golf club or a tennis racket. Oh, all that practice and stuff before the actual games and meets, yeah. Right. They're at risk for elbow tendonitis, as well as baseball players, especially pitchers, with throwing a baseball over and over. Whereas in the ankle, tendonitis is more common with sports that involve a lot of running, like cross country or track. Stress fractures are another cause of overuse injuries. These are not quite as common, but again are seen with sports that require a lot of running. You know, it seems like with the fractures, it, it's kind of obvious when you see a broken bone for the most part. But some of these others, I don't know, how do you know like when your, your child should see a physician or even maybe go to the urgency room for, they're, they're complaining, their arm, their leg, their ankle is hurting them? So the difference between a muscle strain, a joint sprain, or a fracture, in general, a muscle strain is the least severe injury. They tend to be just over the muscle area itself, and there might be some mild associated swelling. With a joint sprain, you're gonna have swelling over the joint itself. You'll have more pain and tenderness over the ligaments. With a break, oftentimes the athlete will remember hearing a pop or a snap, and there'll be much more pain, swelling, and sometimes even a deformity. You know, and, and you has mentioned earlier you want to put ice on some of these right away to get that swelling down and and then um, again when do you take them to the doctor I mean will these just just rest and ice and they'll be okay or so if you think your child has something more than just a minor strain or sprain or if they are continuing to complain of pain they're not able to bear weight mm -hmm. on a leg those would be indications to go in and seek medical treatment. And you mentioned some of the sports where they're more likely to have some of these injuries. What would be some of the other sports that you're seeing injuries um, generated? A lot of the contact sports, so hockey, football, even gymnastics where falls are common, bending and twisting is common. Those are the higher risk sports, although we see it in soccer as well. It's not really a contact sport but kids are running and colliding, and head injuries can be common in soccer as well. And talking about head injuries, um, I know that it seems like schools, coaches, parents, everyone's more aware of concussions these days. But again, what would be some advice that you would give parents and coaches, and maybe the older students too, like you know, when they should go seek help, or what are the symptoms and signs of a concussion? So, head and neck injuries are unfortunately becoming fairly common. If you think a child has a severe head or neck injury, you should call immediately for emergency medical help. In the meantime, the athlete should not be moved because doing so can cause more harm and more damage. For kids that don't have necessarily a, what you think is a severe injury, they still should be seen by a medical provider to make sure there's no serious problem. Now, signs that there is a serious head or neck injury would include 
loss of consciousness, repetitive vomiting, numbness or tingling mm -hmm. in the arms or the legs. But sometimes they can linger and they can have symptoms for days, weeks, even months afterwards if it's not, if they don't get rest and get right. out of the sport. So concussions, they're not diagnosed based on a test. So you can't do an x-ray. You can't do a CT scan to diagnose a concussion. A concussion is diagnosed based on the history of head trauma mm -hmm. and the symptoms that a child is having. Obviously, if you hit your head, you have a headache. But if that headache is persisting for more than a short period of time or more than just that night, then it needs to be checked out. And again, you wanna, which is the hardest thing, I know having, when my kids were younger too, taking them out of the play, resting, and they all wanna get back and, and get on the field or in the, on the court or whatever. Right, you don't want to put them at risk for a second brain injury. The trauma can be much worse if you go back to play with a concussion and we don't want to put young brains at, at that type of risk. It's just not worth it. So they really should be sitting out until they have no symptoms, meaning no headache, no dizziness, or, or no symptoms at all of the concussion. And at this time of the year with the fall sports, is that when you're seeing an increase coming off of the summer? They're getting back into practices and Most definitely. Most definitely with the practices and the games, especially football right now, we see a lot of concussions. Even with um, that, it seems like our equipment is more, there's more safety and, and equipment protecting them, but because they're bigger, stronger, maybe, is that why we're seeing more of these? They are. You know, kids, they're hitting the weight room. Um, they want to be the biggest. They want to be the best. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're moving pretty quick out there. Um, with the concussion, we also want to be careful that um, kids tell their parents when they have an injury. Encourage your kids to let you know if they're hurting. We don't want them to go back out injured. Yeah. There is more awareness now with concussions. Many schools and uh, athletic associations make the kids do a concussion test before they start that activity for the year. They have a baseline test. And if there is an injury, they can tell if the child is ready to resume play or not. Yeah, that's good that they're doing that these days. Um, and, and I don't know if we think as much as soccer also can lend itself to a number of injuries that you had mentioned, from sprains to the head injuries and stuff. We do. We see some bad injuries with soccer. There's a lot of running involved, so they're at risk for the sort of those overuse injuries, but also colliding into one another. They do a lot of uh, hitting the ball off of their head, which can have, have repetitive trauma consequences, and then also the breaks and sprains and dislocations. And this isn't just boys, this is girls as well. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, we see, we have girls hockey now. We see equal number of athletes that are both male and female. So what would be some other advice and tips that you would give parents if their child is participating in sports? Use your common sense. You know, I know you that you want your child to be out there enjoying themselves and you know being the star but if they're playing injured they're probably going to set themselves back if they don't take the time to rest mm -hmm. so really encourage your child to to take the time needed to recover from an injury and for our viewers who may not be familiar with the urgency room why don't you tell us about what is the urgency room and why should they bring their child to the urgency room so the urgency room is owned and operated by board certified ER doctors. We're open conveniently every day of the year from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We have three locations, Vadnais Heights, Woodbury, and Egan. And we have x-rays, CTs, ultrasound, lab, a lot of high-tech equipment to help diagnose and treat whatever condition you might present with. And insurance is accepted? Or insurance, most, insur all of it, most yeah. insurances are accepted. Anything else that they should know about the urgency room or how they can get more information about it? We do have a website, so you can go online to theurgencyroom.com and take a look at us there. Final advice for our parents and, and coaches and what else should they know, doctor? If you think your child has something more than just a minor sprain or strain, 
they should be checked out by a medical provider to make sure there's no serious injury that can cause lasting damage. We want them to have a safe, fun fall sports and not be injury free as well then. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank Great you for advice. having me. Thank you.